say don't wake me up. Don't. You said wake me up before you go go. Just go go. Yeah, just go go. <laughs> So Healing Waters International is a clean water organization. Um, they are based out of Colorado and they have clean water sites in uh, several different countries. We have been able to kind of experience that firsthand. We've gone on what they like to call vision trips with them where we get to kind of get an inside look behind the scenes of what's actually happening on these clean water sites. It doesn't take long to figure out that these, the people that work there are extremely passionate about solving the global water crisis and doing their part um, and doing it in the most cost-effective, efficient, most sustainable way that they can figure out how to do it. Here at Healing Waters, we believe that the global water crisis is one of the greatest humanitarian crises going on in the world right now. We are ruthlessly and singularly focused on this idea of uh, bringing safe water, sanitation, health and hygiene capacity to communities in the developing world. Water is such a critical need for every single individual on the planet. There's not one human that deserves it more than another. The reason is because it is probably in our estimation the most fundamental building block of health the most fundamental building block of uh, economic opportunity and then really just the fundamental basis for daily life. They have developed with their team of engineers a water filtration system that is easy to put together in all different parts of the world. If they don't already have the capabilities uh, we come alongside and invest in them in education and training so that they can build the capacity and have all of the tools and capabilities that they need to be the ones that can sustain it and who with that knowledge can contribute new ideas and be innovative. It's really cool to see too their their heart for sustainability. It's one of my favorite things about it is that Healing Waters equips people in the community to be able to um, take control and have agency over their own situation because the people there in the community are the most familiar with the needs. We don't need to go in and convince someone that they should do a project with us, uh, but really it's something that they would probably eventually figure out a way to do. These communities that Healing Waters is partnered with, they already want to do better. They already have that desire, that spark, that passion to, to take what they have and move it to the next step. Healing Waters is able to help them with the technology and show them how to run that, but it's 100% run by the people in those communities, and that's a, an incredible thing to see. We do that through water operations and business training, where the local members of the community are given training and opportunity to be the site operators managing the entire water system and everything that goes into the distribution model to make sure that their community has safe water. We also do health and hygiene education, which is um, the biggest thing that creates long-lasting change is when a community receives the knowledge and education they need to help themselves. The timing is right. The relationships are there and we're able to get it started hopefully sooner than later uh, because these communities have such desperate needs. It's, it's a beautiful thing to see the men and women in these communities taking that agency and, and really working. Our team, 
while in the Dominican Republic, visited a school called El Almendro. It's essentially a school that goes up until kindergarten. So the, the, the reason for this place it started as a kind of providing assistance to mothers, most of them single moms, that had to leave really early in the morning to go work somewhere in the city. A waiting list. <laughs> no way. <laughs> 400. As soon as we came through the, the school gates, there's a wall around the whole school and you, you come through the doors and there's just a sea of children in these classrooms. The teachers were very, very welcoming and they just started stepping us through what their students were learning, what they were doing um, as far as activities. And they had their whole lesson for the week laid out and the students voted on what they wanted to learn. So they had solar system or the sun specifically or the ocean or mountains or different things they could pick. The year before there was a big poem about clean water uh, and, and why it was so important to their school and that's the whole reason we were there. They have a clean water filtration uh, system on site at this school and it not only services the school but the surrounding community around it. There's a, like I said, the whole school is walled in but there's a like an opening on the back end of the school where they can reach out to the community and have a water store located there. Very sophisticated, the program that they run and operate, and um, their staff was so welcoming and just ready to like pour out their heart about what they do. For me, I think uh, Merced, who runs the daycare, who was called to come and minister to these people and provide clean water and provide education, uh, she is an inspiring individual. What, what she's been able to do and how humble she is about it and how um, her faith has carried her through, it's, it's very, uh, it's emotional and it's very impactful. It's when you see all of these kids, a few hundred kids that are getting education, that are learning about health and hygiene, that are drinking clean water and have this safe place to go, uh, and you see them running around and dancing and smiling, uh, you, you know you're making a difference. You know uh, that water was the catalyst for what that daycare is able to do. I didn't part partake in the dance, but there was a dance, and um, I think we have footage of James dancing, which is really fun. Let me think. <laughs> I did dance with the kids. I, I'm not sure if there's any footage of that. I hope there isn't. <laughs> but they do, they get all the kids together and they play some great dance music. And it's hard not to want to get out there and, and have fun with them. And uh, those kids can dance. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we visited a, a water site right right downtown, uh, Santo Domingo, and um, it, it was really cool when we went in. I mean, it was a beautiful site. It looked very, very professional. Um, not that the others don't, but this one just looked, maybe because it was downtown, there was a curbside window on the sidewalk where um, people that live in that area can walk right up to a counter and just set their jug up or their bottles and be filled and pay and just off they go on their daily commute. Once we got inside and we were looking around, we realized the store wasn't operating. And they were um, shut down temporarily uh, due to some health code and uh, that they needed to get some equipment up to date and uh, to, to pass local regulation. And what, it, what that did for us, I think it put in perspective that there's, there's challenges with these sites, but the site overall was really cool. There was a school upstairs, there's a church right there, kind of all in a city block. And uh, up on the top, they had an incredible view of the city and it was neat to go up and realize, you know, we had just seen this water site that was not functional. And then we went up on the roof and we're just looking over the city. And it kind of put in perspective that this site serves this, this area. And, um, how important it was to, to be able to get that site up and running. Well, we were told before we left the States to bring some baseball gear, so we were ready. We were fully prepared. Um, pinstripe pants, socks, cleats, helmets, eye paint. No, we didn't do that, but we did have gloves and a couple balls, so we were all looking forward to it and we were driving down this road and so we 
pass where we were gonna play baseball and there was already a bunch of kids gathered up. I think there were probably some four or five year olds running around, maybe not playing, but you know, upper elementary age, all the way to, to high school age uh, kids and we, we got a baseball game going. They had a field there and uh, we just had fun. I mean, the game's universal. It's huge there. And uh, the talent level was uh, super impressive. I think we got it handed to us overall. There was a huge crack in one of the bats. I just remember that. It was like swinging a sword. Like if you got around it or if you picked up the bat wrong, your hand was gonna fall off. But it was just fun, like getting over the language barrier, being able to communicate through a game and just enjoy uh, being so far out of um, a comfort zone, a city. You know, we were in a very rural area. The game overall was, was the language. That's how we communicated. It was just through smiling and high fives and playing taking time to just stop and hang out. Consuelo is an interesting site. Uh, Pastor Julio there really uh, has great vision. And I think the takeaway there is that they didn't stop at water. We came to a fairly large building with a set of stairs going up and a ramp going one way and it was two stories and it just kind of stuck out more so than uh, what we had been seeing on the way in. And we pulled up to another gate and there was um, there, Pastor Eddie and Pastor Julio came out and greeted us. And first we took off and toured their school and, and saw their church building. It was time to go see the bakery and so basically in my words is that this site uh, re received their clean water filtration uh, store and, and the store was beautiful. It was one of the most impressive operations, really of anything that I've seen, but especially these water sites. They're all very clean inside, very, very clean, but this one was just top notch. The front counter, like the store area, looked like a, a corner block market type place, you know, a, a glass counter, very, you know, what, what you'd be accustomed to. Uh, there was an employee there working. They were sold out for the day. There was literally nothing in the glass counter. And I thought at first, like, this is a bad sign, and then we found out that they had sold out, like it was just gone for the day. So then we went into the back, their production facility, and that's where I, I think everybody in our team had their mind just wrecked. They had a commercial grade bakery in the back. And there is a team of people in the back, all wearing white, and they were just baking away. On top of the bakery, they took us up and they have basically like education room, a classroom, and there's a commercial kitchen as well, more like a home kitchen that you, that you would see in someone's house. And they do classes uh, for the community. And they bring um, just local community members in and teach all types of different uh, cooking lessons, cooking schools, uh, sanitation classes, uh, you name it. The community can use this room uh, for, for whatever they might need it. You're talking about a community where jobs aren't just you know sitting around waiting for people to fill them. And because the bakery, this is what's cool about it. It doesn't just provide baked goods for that immediate community and for their school, but they provide baked goods for other schools in the area that are doing similar things to what they're doing there. Like this story is it. I mean, this is you know we talk about taking action with what we have and taking action uh, to make a dent in the global water crisis, and then you see the site come in. And, and not only did someone take action to make that happen, but now this community has this huge vision and they're able to take action with what they have and what they can create and what they can utilize their people for. And all of this started by simply um, seeing a, a need for clean water, putting a filtration site in, selling that water and then having these proceeds and they're able to do these incredible things. Uh, so when we talk about healing waters being, having this sustainable method, uh, that that's a perfect example, and I hope that um, that someday, you know, we can look at what we're doing and go, hey, is it as good as what the bakery in Consuelo is doing? We do taxes, but we do taxes to make a dent in the global water crisis. That's the most rewarding thing um, that I can I can think that a company could do, especially when you travel to see firsthand. Uh, meet people, hear stories, all about a bakery, a school, a baseball game, or whatever it might be, but 
the one thing that all of those stories have in common is clean water. And the one thing that would make those stories not exist is clean water. Well, clean water is essential to living. You, you have to have it, there's no substitute for it. But it's fun to think, hey, we do this to impact this person, to impact Pastor Eddie, to impact the kids at the baseball game, to impact families that we don't even know about yet. Um, when you have that mindset in a workplace, we don't just do this to, to, for the man. You know, we're not just doing this for a, a bottom line. Like that stuff's great, but when you do it with more purpose and, and there's a passion behind it, it makes whatever you do uh, that much more enjoyable and, and fun to walk through. It's easy, it's easy to work with, it's easy to support people that are extremely passionate about what they're doing. Usually they will talk about what it was like before Healing Waters came in, before they had the water store, and then what life has been like and how the community has been transformed since the water store was in place. We see the impact on the communities that don't have it, and it affects every year of their life and holds uh, communities back, it holds individuals back. Uh, when you're sick, you don't want to go to work. When you're sick, you don't want to go to school. I just think that that's so important for us, especially in our culture, is to find find ways to make what we do count. It doesn't have to be at this level. You know, what that could look so different for each person, each business, each organization, uh, but, but do something. Find something that you're really passionate about. Find a company that, you know, is really holding themselves accountable to be sustainable long term. As basic as it is, it's monumental and of course there's uh, research studies that have been put out by the UN that identify that there's no other uh, single intervention that you could bring to community that would have more impact on alleviating poverty than bringing safe water.